Uh, um, I mean, maybe maybe just do it twice. Um, nine, sure. Yay, segmentation font! <laughs> So today we're messing around with MRust C, um, which is a Rust compiler written in C++, and it's not safe. <laughs> uh, it basically the idea is that we can bootstrap a Rust compiler from this, uh, which is, I guess, I don't know if that's the actual motivation here, but. It's uh, it's a way to defeat, I, I guess defeat, I don't know if defeat is the right word, but like to work around uh, uh, the trusting trust problem. There's this paper from, I don't know who, but like, I think it's called Reflections on Trusting Trust, which is like if you have a self-hosting compiler, someone could build a version that detects when it's compiling the compiler and builds in an exploit. And so you can actually have the source, but um, whenever you build it with your compiler, it builds a version that's not the same as the source, basically, that could propagate. So uh, the, the idea is basically you can never just trust the compiler. And if the compiler compiles itself, that's kind of a problem from that standpoint. So if you can actually compile a compiler from a different language, it sort of alleviates the problem. And in theory, like this is written in C++, so uh, I guess probably someone has at some time, uh, there's probably a public somewhere, a C compiler that's written in assembly. In assembly, that's actually readable. I hope that exists. And then, so like, if you don't trust compilers, you could uh, go look at the source of uh, of a C compiler written in assembly. Uh, obviously, you'd have to understand assembly, but uh, and then go compile that. Then you have a C compiler. You can now trust. Uh, well, I guess first you'd have to write an assembler in machine code. But yeah, I, I'm, I guess the question is where to start. But I mean, I guess if you really want to like establish trust, you'd have to do that. But I mean, also like if if there's a thing built into a compiler that like detects when it's compiling itself, you'd defeat that by going through another language. So, but like, let's say you just want to fully trust it. <laughs> then I, I think I'm not sure if I'm right on that, but I think the GCC, uh, C plus plus compiler, uh, I think that's written in C. So you could then with your, C compiler from assembly, compile that, and then with that, compile this, and then you have Rust. <laughs> Which I guess the other way would be to like follow the origin of Rust. Uh, I think it was the original before the bootstrapped uh, or before the like self-hosting compiler. Uh, it was in OCaml, so I guess you'd have to figure out how to compile an OCaml compiler, but I think pretty much doing anything than just like downloading the Rust compiler and compiling itself with it will like probably defeat in case there's any like vulnerability in the distributed binary. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think that's the reason why projects like this exist. And it's also really awesome because uh, you can actually compile Rust without having to have a borrow checker. 
uh, because it like you can just ignore lifetimes pretty much. I think I don't know if this compiler actually ignores lifetimes though, but you can ignore borrow checking and just trust that it's right uh, in the code. Obviously, then you won't detect the wrong code. But if your goal is bootstrapping, um, that actually works. And so basically, <laughs> starting a Rust compiler is much easier than like implementing a full one, um, which is related to the idea that it's easier to read Rust than to write Rust, because I can tell some, I can show someone my Rust code and tell them like just ignore those lifetime annotation thingies. These are just references, or or I can like if if they're a C programmer, I can tell them to like that's just a pointer. Um, and I can read my code, and I I guess I can even tell them to ignore mutability. And just assume everything's mutable, but I don't. I think just explaining mutability briefly will probably assist in readability. But the idea is like you don't need to actually to read Rust code. You don't need to fully understand all of the concepts. And the same applies for compiling valid Rust code, which I've always thought is a really cool idea <laughs> or concept. There it build. Ooh, output, that's new. Um, I guess we can just run it. Output slash. Yay, it works. <laughs> All right, let's try with, I guess, 2018 edition. Uh, and then. All right, I guess that's the C it generates. Let's do some wildly unsafe shit. All right. Still working. All right. Uh, I guess I'll start. I have to start using the nvim terminal, but I don't know how that works anymore. <laughs> uh, right. So let's do something that's n not allowed. Um, forbidden. <laughs> and we return a static reference to an int uh, right 12 and let's call it uh, forbidden yes let I <laughs> whatever uh, I guess and then let's try this again okay you this is gonna be fun 12 <laughs> I mean, I guess let's see if we can break it, like make it do some, because in a way this should be unsafe, right? Because this is a local variable, but, well, I mean, actually, that might just be allowed because maybe it'll just like with strings allocate them statically or something but that shouldn't be allowed um, right 
Right, right, right. Okay, so that's uh, now that's not allowed. Sure. But will mrust c and actually let's just open a separate terminal. Uh, okay, it builds output slash. Let's actually chain those together. All right, uh, let's make it a different number. So just so it doesn't like hidden fail or something. Yay. <laughs> okay, so now what happens if we have another function? that um, some stuff that uh, I don't know let's make this a mutable variable just so it's actually allocated and then we increment it for some reason and then we print no we print it I know why I'm calling all them all of those <laughs> variables why but <laughs> all right so now if we then call some stuff that should like break because so far this has been fine like not fine but it worked because this is a new stack frame then it returns and then this function main continues and just prints without like it doesn't use a new stack frame it doesn't like overwrite the space the i used before or at least only later maybe like like I can't imagine print not using functions, but maybe it like yeah I don't know, but let's see. But the problem is also like maybe if it's optimizing, it might just optimize out the dumb shit we're doing. <laughs> so ah uh, yeah. Okay, so it's still printed the right thing. Hmm, how can we get it to not optimize? I mean, I guess let's uh, let's do something with it. Um. Is another U32 and let's like add it. I don't know twice. I don't know how to defeat optimizations. <laughs> well, I mean, user input would work, but like otherwise, I don't know when this particular compiler like optimizes stuff. Incorrect number of. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's built and then yeah so as you can see like this doesn't check much um, let's pass 7 in here no that's actually right why is it <laughs> I mean we could look at it in Godbolt but because Godbolt actually has this compiler. Uh, I mean, I guess we can make it random, but then we need to import a crate. Uh, I mean, I guess we could like a loop. Maybe that doesn't, but like the Rust, con well, 
this isn't actual rust so maybe all right uh, if i equals 30 uh, break um, and otherwise increment with j and <laughs> I don't know decrement with two <laughs> no that like doesn't matter um um I mean maybe maybe just do it twice um nine sure yay segmentation fault. <laughs> Or is that in the compiler? Wait, 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 wait. Ah, it might be in the C compiler. Let's see, did it? Output slash. Ah, oh, it, it outputs 28. <laughs> and then it segfaults. Ooh, is it because the same variable? No, that can't be. All right. Okay, how does this sec fault exactly? So I <clears throat> guess you actually have to know a bunch about compiler <laughs> optimization in order to deliberately crash stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we we managed to sacrifice, so uh, I think that's enough <laughs> for me. Um, yeah. So yeah, go check out M Rust. See, it's I think projects like this are really cool. Um, and uh, yeah. See you next time.